coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. Is it true that your Icon Pro wheel is on all the trams in Nottingham? Yes. <laughs> Everybody looked at Icon like a supermarket brand. I've always said I've been a skateboarder since I could walk. In fact, the first time I met him, I swear to hit him. Talking of two, can we talk about three balls? <laughs> Hands bleeding. I've still got the scar there from his tooth. Not many people like the fact that I went on to bomber. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> he started shouting, but I've had to knock him out. The owner tried to threaten me with Ben Grote. He came to my house with some big bold guy. Now, this big bold guy that he brought was hiding behind my wheelie bin and I just hit him. I don't believe I should have won it. Stu Graham had a super soaker full of white rum and he kept coming up to me and shooting it in my mouth. Having my own board and wheels made me into like a right snob and all these guys stood around me, surrounding me. Before I'm going to get my head kicked in. So I just got up I went, who's next? Make shift break dancing in the middle of a competition. <laughs> Pancho's in some guy's pocket, tying Pancho's legs to a car. And then they just drove off and dragged him out of the tent. So I'm wrestling this guy, trying to get my wallet back. And I don't know if you've ever been sprayed with pepper spray before, but it murders your eyes. Oh man, I'm never going to get on that brain drain. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to another great episode of The Brain Drain Show with me, for Brookfield. Joined to my left is my trusty co-host, Toby Richmond Bachelor. Toby, tell us your full name, Toby. <laughs> Toby Richmond Bachelor, you just said Is it, it Richmond or is yeah, it Richmond? Yeah, no, no, it's Richmond. It's Richmond. Yeah, a lot of people call me just Richmond. A lot of people call him Teabag. You watch Prison Break? <laughs> I've seen a couple of episodes. He look, I Fraser said he looks it. like Teabag and I've not been able to like drop. What was the question sent that DM, didn't he? He was like, look, at this guy looks like Toby fighting someone on a car what was that about <laughs> <laughs> i'm I sorry think, i was like i don't is that what people see me as because i think question sent a video of two guys fighting and just one of them vaguely just had dark hair and is he was just like link? this looks like toby right so toby <coughs> i've introduced you would you yeah. like to introduce our very special guest uh it's nottingham og legend craig smedley craig smedley round of applause in studio audience please cheers guys east midlands legend East Midlands, yeah, probably. Yeah. I've never been out of it. You have. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you want to start? Should we just go in with the basics first? Let's go then? in with the basics. Where did when did you start skating? Where are you from? Give us yeah. give us the history when of growing up. Skating? Give us the landscape. Paint a pretty picture. Well, of the when life. I when I started skating, I was fourteen. Mm. What year and, was that then? Oh my god, no! How old are you now? I'm forty nine. Oh yeah. Yeah, fifty this year. Nice. nice. Still skating as well. Mm, it's good, yeah. isn't it? Those people are still skating as I get towards 50. So it hurts, but... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there's a bit of a... It hurts your brain more than anything. In what way? What Because up here, you, up here... You can do it all. You can do everything. Yeah, but you can. Because you know you've got the, you've got the, the knowledge of how to do it, and yeah. but your body just goes, yeah. Yeah. You've jumped down too many stairs now. So Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so do the math then. So you, you start skating when you're 14, you're 49. Do the math. You've got a calculator there. Fraser. What year was that? I'm just trying to understand the I landscape. Think, was it 80? Anyone watching this show? 86. 86? Fucking hell, that's... Maybe so you were 86. pre Back to the Future, Police Academy 4. So no, hang on. 8... 75, yeah. 74. 1974 plus I'm terrible at maths like that. I need yeah. 1988. Oh, same 88. as me. 88. 88, yeah. So that was that through um, anyone in particular just... you saw skating or were you just like... No. So before that, I used to ride BMXs because I lived right near a BMX track yeah. from when I was about eight. But mm. I'd always looked at, I've always said I've been a skateboarder since I could walk. Yeah. Because I always looked, you know, when it rained, Yeah. look at Andrails when it's wet. Well, even when you were like, and I before used to, you could walk? Yeah, no, when I could like walk, I when say, I was <laughs> walked around, yeah, <laughs> ba you know. Baby's got a sick face. He looks at Hammer he's like, I don't think I can get down that hammer. <laughs> no, but I just used to, it, this was way before soap shoes. Yeah. I used to b buy trainers with an arch in them in yeah. the sole. Yeah. So I could slide down wet handrails on my feet. So did you Because it was an easier way of getting downstairs. Fucking hell, this is, this is the good shit. I love this. <laughs> so did you inspire soap shoes? Is that? No, I wish I'd have come up with did the you, idea. Yeah. Did you used to wax up the bit in the middle? Never knew about wax back then. So you then just jumped on those rails and slid down? If it was wet, if it had been raining, because it slid. 
Have you got any photos? This- <laughs> <laughs> just thought this is going to sound like I'm a pedo, but I was going to say if you've got any photos of you when you when you're a baby, so we can do, like, <laughs> do an animation of Craig Smedley as a baby soap shooting down a handrail, but then it came out wrong. So just cut that bit out. No, that's <laughs> that's that's it's golden just like, comedy. Just not funny like saying sk- that. Craig Smedley going down handrail on soap shoes as a baby. That's amazing. <laughs> but skaters look at everything differently. That's mm-hmm. yeah. That's what makes you skateboard. Yeah, you don't yeah. step in puddles and shit mm. like that, do you? No. And- what? <laughs> Well, you don't. If you're a skater, you don't step in puddles. If you want to, you you would just. And even if you're skating or not, if you've got yeah. wet shoes, you dry them off. Yeah, it's a skater thing, but oh, I guess because we're older. Um, around that time, 1988, there's a lot of people started skating, and because of what I was saying, Back to the Future came out. Back to the Future. Police Academy Four, the Bones Brigade section. There was a bit of that was that one was, of the booms, wasn't it? That was Citizens on Patrol. Yeah. Would you say Back to the Future was such a breaking point for yeah. people, for a lot of people to start yeah. skating? Yeah, because a lot. Incredible. Of, it was around. Police Gleam Academy in the 4. Cube. Gleam in the Cube as well, which is rad. Yeah. yeah. Police Academy 4. I'm sure that's right. Google that, please. please uh, yeah, I think it is 4. That had the skate section in, which was basically a Bones Brigade video within Police Academy 4. Can we can, can you get it on the screen? Can we just watch that quickly? Because it's fucking good. Why? I wonder why you had a... <laughs> Well, it's I had like so a Bones Brigade section. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not. I used to watch that and get stoked so to go good. out skating. You probably oh, want to make off. sure that it's muted. No, let's just uh, watch it. It reminded me of uh, public domain, the streets, the street part with Ray Barbie, Steve Size, and that Chet was because that came out in '88 as well. Why is Naomi Campbell on the screen? <laughs> um, I mean, you're not complaining. Please, uh, public domain was that one of your first videos that you saw? Yeah, same as me, and I remember seeing it. For the first time, sort of knowing a bit about skating and having a skateboard, but that was the first like proper video, and my brain just lost it that I'd, people could do that shit because I ne- didn't know you could. But the street skating definitely, yeah. Because I started skating and all I thought was ramps. Yeah, yeah. I didn't skate ramps. I, I skated ramps for the first two years of skating. Mm. Yeah. Like, can we just add the volume on? This is the best bit. This is watch this. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, all right. I'll, we I'll, can't, cut, we, I'll cut the audio out. I'm, I'm probably going to cut it out if we sat here watching it for two minutes. Yeah, just watch it because it's so good. And I can't believe you've not seen this. So that's, what's his name? Who's still friends with Tony Hawk now? Is, um, what's his name? He's like, he's a proper film star. Hmm. He's in... Uh, yeah, it's big time. Oh, he's in How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Which one are we talking about? The guy on the left? Pink Shirt. Oh, Pink Shirt. So Tony Hawk was his stunt double. Yeah. And then Lance Mountain was the stunt double for the other guy. Can we have some volume so we can actually... Cabs in it too. Yeah, they're all in it. No, no volume, I don't think, because I'll probably just lay the video over the actual. Yeah, but this is amazing. That launch ramps. <laughs> it's all about launch ramps, then, wasn't it? Yeah, launch ramps. What's Not kickers way? anymore. They, they were launch ramps. They had to have a, a tranny on them. Sorry, going back to it. So this was kind of one of the first skating things you saw, right? Yeah. It was for a lot of people. It kind of like. I know it's hard to explain, really. The like. first person I ever saw on a skateboard was Brad. Should we talk about Brad? And but I used to BMX with him. All oh, right, so you knew him at the track when you were small, yeah. Yeah, and uh, in fact, the first time I met him, I threatened to hit him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I can't remember. It's something to do with like snaking me on the BMX track. I just always remember nice. going to Radlands, and he was there with like his ice hockey kind of vibe and mm. his uh, bobble hat. Trying to spin McTwist. He's landed him. Yeah, I'm sure he, he has, him. but I never, I never saw him do it. What Brad are we talking about? Just Brad Garner. Garner. Brad Garner. Just to from clarify, because you two were kind of like. It was oh, just... mate! If it weren't for him, I wouldn't have been skating for so long, or yeah. mm. even like it's going to sound big headed, but I wouldn't have been as good as I got because he, he used, I had no imagination for tricks. He used to tell me what to try. Yeah. Well, it's that thing, isn't it? Skating with people that are better than you pushes your progression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Do you still see thing. Brad? I've seen him a couple of times in the last two or three years. Is he not skating anymore? No, he does uphill mountain biking. Do you reckon he could still do fives? No. He used to do it paddless on that yeah, big used to do it paddless. I did a 540 on Bestwood Spine Ramp. It was a six-foot high spine ramp. Mute, uh, early mute grab 540. Sick. Okay. <laughs> All right. We need to see that. Have you got footage of it? No. Oh, fucking hell. That'd be good. Was it rotated or McTwisted? Just around in a circle a kind of thing. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Is it eight sneezes and then you jizz? 
<laughs> That's like an urban myth, isn't it? I did six the other day, but nothing. Oh, happened. there you go. There's nothing a, happened down there. But there's I mean, a good trailer. Pretty, there's a good trailer clip for you. <laughs> but, I mean, it's pretty much dead down there anyway. Right. Um, who was your first sponsor? My first sponsor. Mm. Yeah, run us through your sponsors. Oh my god, it was. First sponsor was nonstop. I was going to mm. say, I bet it's nonstop. Yeah, a lot of people. Big up, was, Robin. Yeah. Yeah, like did loads for us. Did loads for the scene back then. All the Rock City skate festivals. They oh, yeah, amazing. that used to go on in there, didn't it? Yeah. There was talk about doing another one. Yeah. Like, they were talking about it last year. I think there's too much red tape with that shit now. It's too back much. Back in those, like, 25, safety, 30 years yeah. ago, you could, you just did stuff. Mm. Like, imagine all those St. Albans and Radlands comps if oh, you had mate. to tick off red tape shit. Mate. I mean, it would never have carnage. happened. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, Beat the booze. That was a good one. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be people skating around like Kate's blowing fire. People so drunk. Joyce in a gimp on. suit. Yeah, it just you couldn't do that now. No. I assume those competitions, like Radlands competitions and stuff like that, they were literally just like you had a date. Yeah, that was it. It wasn't like sign a disclaimer. No, you just turn up. You have to be in. over <laughs> sixteen, under sixteen. You have to wear a helmet. You just turn like, up and skate. All the the um. The championship stuff where all the Americans came over. That go it was gnarly like, it was chaos times, in yeah. there. Like there was viewing gallery areas, but it was rammed. Like mm. health and safety, no. But they, all the spectators were on the street course yeah. most of the time. Yeah. It was just it was Yeah, you can see it in old footage. And Chris like... Ince get, would be drunk dancing on the middle of the pyramid. <laughs> what was that time uh Pritch was dressed up as a chef or something, wasn't he? That was was that the beat the booze one? I don't know. Like he was just wasn't he cooking something on top of the car? Because there was a car overturned in there, wasn't there? Inside Redlands, I'm sure there was. Because Alex Mole did a load of stuff on it. I'm like, maybe I'm just. I know I was there when he was dressed as a chef, but I can't remember having a car there. But yeah, I mean, I I can't like you can't really explain how it was. The whole atmosphere was just insane. Totally different. I mean, we spoke about it with when Haslam was on, like because he came over for that, didn't he? Before he was. Like before well known, he was like, like Haslam, yeah, he said he went to the Radlands comps. But people did would be, yeah, before he was big, he came over, um, or known, you know. Um, he was at the one where, you know, Tony Hawk did the five on the mini. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. at that one. We were talking, yeah. you know, like when uh, Gershan Mosey, when he sweat slid box. out, there's sweat everywhere. Yeah. Like that was the one I think he was, he was on, sorry. Um, but yeah, the people would be sleeping in the streets or, you know, within like mm. half a mile radius. It would just be like sleeping bags. Those competitions skaters. sound amazing. They were they were good. I mean, it was like you'd turn up, especially for when the Americans were over and it'd just be like, oh, there's Lance Mountain. Oh, look, Steve Cavs there. Oh, Jason Ellis is puking up out the back of the... <laughs> oh, there's Pat Dodge. I, got, I, I, I became <laughs> quite... I bet he wouldn't remember either now. It was so long ago. But I remember because I used to idolise the guy. Yeah. So um, back then it was like, smoking weed and stuff and i got quite good friends with oh god his name's just gone out my head what guy mariano's mates no um you did say guy didn't you no who did you say this guy oh this guy yeah oh, oh. Right. Uh, not guy not the guy not, not the guy mariano. gino was there once i remember gino being there yeah, Steve gino, Santa Rosa. loads of just basically anyone who was in four on one was there reynolds Carl Watson. Carl Watson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So I used to get to British Championships. Find which him. Is what it was called back then. Yeah. We'd we'd find each other and sit there smoking weed before the competition together, nice. just chatting. That was nuts. Yeah. Because yeah. like it was like back then, if you had a skateboard in your hand, everybody was your friend. Yeah. It was kind of mm-hmm. it was so different, wasn't it? Like if you saw a skater in the street, it's like all right. Yeah. Know, like because. Everyone dresses like skaters now, but like yeah. back then it was like we stuck up. You used to look at the shoes as well. Yeah, like, oh, shoes worn, worn out. out. Yep. Yeah, your You're shoes skater. worn out. He's a skater. It was different times. It was it was good times though. It was funny, mm. wasn't it? Like, Surely a competition like that could take place, but it needs to be at a big independent indoor skate park that's what i tried to do with it's a block out because surely you couldn't have it at flow because it's charity funded as mm, well yeah. and well, they have health problem, and it? safety you need someone that has their own skate park and doesn't give a fuck about potentially privately owned yeah yeah but who owns their own skate well, park it's, in it's, the UK? it's that whole mentality I, i'm assuming comes from america where everyone's going to sue everyone <laughs> that wasn't around then no it was like you went skating and you know if you went yourself like, you deal yeah, with it now, yeah now it's like sign this because if you hurt yourself you might sue us and so i'm not going to do that but everyone's trying to cover their backs like i understand if you did it 
in modern times now and you still maybe signed a disclaimer form, that's not bad. Mm. You know, just say if you do injure yourself, but then when you're in there, just go fucking wild. Wait, hold on a sec. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of the podcast, the podcast that you are enjoying listening to right now. Toby, who's sponsoring this episode? Today's sponsor is Camp Rubicon Skate Camps, which have been around since 2006. They are active for eight weeks a year, so you need to get in while you can. Campers have been traveling from all around the globe for almost a decade for the ultimate skateboarding holiday camp experience. And this year, they will see the campers head over to Europe to have a little skate in Barcelona. Barcelona. And even the Netherlands for about a week. Barcelona. Say it. Barcelona. Barcelona. Guests in the past have included the likes of Chris Vile, Paul Regan, Tommy Corbridge, Alex Takuna, Adam Keats, Aaron Jago. They've also had veterans like Andy Scott. My homie Nikki Howes and Craig Smedley. Craig. Included in the camp is accommodation, travel, food and entry fees to any parks. So whilst you're at Camp Rubicon, they also aim to skate two parks a day, which means 10 parks a week. That also includes some of the most famous and popular indoor and outdoor skate parks known to man. Okay. So overall, it just sounds like a sick week where you can skate with some incredible skateboarders and meet like-minded people. So to all the viewers and listeners out there that want to find out more information about Camp Rubicon, where can they search? CampRubicon.com, and that's Rubicon spelled R-U-B-I-C-O-N. They are also on Instagram at Camp Rubicon, and you can send them an email, info at CampRubicon.com. Did you know emails don't get wet like letters? I never e knew that. Anyway. Are you on email? Back to the show. Are you on email? We should probably let the listeners know about the Patreon that we're starting. Do you want to give them some information about that? Yes, I will. So from as little as £2 a month, you can become a Patreon member and get access to uncensored, uncut episodes, mm. behind-the-scenes shiz, bonus OG episodes. What does that mean, Ford? Like the episodes that we used to do where it was just me and Toby doing reviews, fan mail, and anything else in between. And Toby's favourite, Stinker of the Week. Stinker of the Week is back, but only on Patreon episodes. Mm -hmm. You will also get outtakes, early access to new merch when it launches, mm -hmm. general skate nerdery, and much, 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 much more. <laughs> make sure you check out all the information in the description. Follow the links. Make sure you subscribe, become a member, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Um, Non-stop first hookup. Yeah, and then... What was your first photo in a mag? I was in skate action. Skate action. Yeah. Fucking hell, that's going back, isn't it? What year was that? I mean, that went out of business in 1990, I think. It was like, I think it was in the last year of the magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was at Radlands. It was mad to think that something. there was like, well, what year did Radlands open? 93, no, it wasn't it? Yeah, it weren't at Radlands. 92, 93 or something like that. We did a, we nonstop did a, like a skateboard event at the college. And they had yeah. a, they had like a load of ramps and blocks in there. And I'm sure it was just, no, I know what it is now. <laughs> I've just figured it out. It was at Roller Snakes Ramp. Mm. In, in Nottingham. In Nottingham, in Nottingham yeah. I was doing a melon fakie. Nice. First. Nice. Yeah, that was it. Right. Who shot that? I have no idea. I didn't know who anybody was back then. I think people shooting photos then, it was TLB, was it Meanie and skate, Skateboard Mag? It could have been Donovan. Fuck, I don't know. This black guy from Nuts. Yeah. I've that so. up. Yeah. Good luck trying to find that one. I've got loads of old, um, loads of old like red, rad magazines and skateboarder magazines and every photo is at an indoor park on a ramp. You yeah. Know what I mean, like there's just that era of... It was just ramps. Everything yeah. was ramps. Yeah. It was... And then you see the transition into street skating and it's banks because obviously everyone's yeah. just taking it from transition to banks because that's what you used to. Yeah. I think in that photo as well, Gons is in the background because it was when Gons was there. Oh, was it that time when they yeah. were Oh, that's right, isn't it? Was that the same... What was the reason Gons was here? Was it a blind thing? I or? think it was, yeah. I and just turned up because that's where I used to skate. I used to go home from school, Yeah. go skate the ramp. That was it. And, and if you bought your board... Gons was there. And one, yeah, one day Gons was there. I didn't even know who he was. I just knew he was American and he was quite good. Yeah. Quite good. That Easiest way to put it. <laughs> there was quite a few people came through there. Dressen went there. Um, Bill Danforth Bill skated Danforth. in Doc Martens. Yeah. Pushing Th Mongo. There's a good <laughs> photo of him in there doing a front side 50. Yeah. Front side 50 in Doc Martens yeah. with rolled up trousers. Yeah. Fucking hell, my neck just keeps clicking. So you got a podcaster's neck. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, then where did you, what was your first board sponsor? First board sponsor, Subcom. Is that? Where's that from? It's an old, old American brand. 
Run like, us through it. Tell us about it. used to have a lot of like, they used to have a lot of monkeys on the graphics in like astronaut suits and stuff like that. I've never heard that of was, that. Is I that got to do with sending the first monkey to space or something? It could theory. have been something like that. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it was about, but it was through, through non-stop that I got that. Um, Who was I, on the team? I was on Mercury trips. I don't know. Mercury. I was really trips. naive back then, and like I didn't. <coughs> all I was bothered about was going skateboarding. Yeah, and it's the best like, attitude. Trying to trying to just get better myself. Oh god, yeah. I wish so many skaters had that attitude now. There's so many people who's just like it's convoluted now. I wish people would just here shut we up. go. Just shut up <laughs> and go skating. That would make everything so much easier. Just go skating. Yeah. It's like I've, ne- I've don't never. Don't start going. Who are you referring? I'm not referring to anyone in particular. No, I don't saying, think you are. I know. I know I'm what just you saying, mean. people, just shut up and go skating. Anyway, sorry. I, 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 I was never one for going out and specifically going and film a trick. Mm. Yeah, if I, just wanting to skate. All, all my all my clips or anything have always been just because I've been out skating and someone's pointed a camera at me. Because mm. I don't, I can't. That's like being a performing monkey. Mm. Like, go here, do this rail. No, not in the mood. Yeah, but you had plenty of stuff in the mag. Had plenty of coverage when you like were kicking off with you know getting boards and stuff from pro boards. Yeah, it was. I mean, what year did you turn pro? I know, and it was two thousand. That late? I thought it was sooner than that. No, it was two thousand. You were like during that mid nineties to two thousands era. You were around at all the comps, weren't you? Yeah. You just went every time you were at Radlands. It smelled there. Yeah. Uh, I won. I won the unsponsored comp at Radlands on the Saturday. Yeah. And then begged Chris to let me enter the sponsored comp because I wasn't sponsored. And he was like, yeah, go on then. And I think I won that. I nice. came second. I can't remember. Yeah. So subcon skateboards. Subcon skateboards. And then on to. And the, at the same time, I got Mercury trucks and Stussy clothing. Oh, oh Sussy so Clothing at that Stussy time's a good, good one. one. That was nuts. Yeah. I went to I went to stay with them in London one time. Yeah. And uh they just gave me that like, sent me to the warehouse, gave me a shopping trolley and went, just pick what you want. Okay. Is that, that's good. When was they that were doing hook? Supreme stuff as well, so I got some Supreme jeans. Nice. Still was got that? it. Pardon? Still got it. What? Some of the Supreme stuff, some of the Sussy no, stuff. No. I love so it. it by now. <laughs> was that hook up with Stussy? Was that because Robin was doing a lot of it at nonstop? Yeah, at that time? yeah, yeah. Um, Stussy was sick at that time as well, wasn't it? I mean, I, yeah. Do they still hook up Lance Mountain? I think he's still on Stussy, isn't he? I don't know. I'm sure he is. Is it a surf? Was it skate and surf, Stussy? That's what I always imagined it to be. I should know, but I don't. Wasn't really ever on my radar. Skate and surf. Was, do you remember anything about it? Let's I don't. See. I don't know if it was. You know, I think it was just a fashion brand. Yeah, yeah just a higher end yeah. fashion. Um, when did? Uh, sorry, so where did you go to Subcon and then Mercury Trucks Mercury riding for Trucks, Stussy, Stussy, and then what came after that? Yeah, I went back to nonstop, like just riding nonstop blanks. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Subcon stopped just stopped production yeah so i didn't get anything from them and uh yeah because i used to do my own graphics my own non-stop graphics of spray paint <laughs> nice on non-stop blanks that was the era of the blanks yeah when everyone was riding mm. blanks and then then it was icon how long were on icon for 15 years fucking hell was it around that long i don't know i think so i didn't even get on it at the beginning Brad was on it with Simpson. Yeah, I kind of had a pretty heavy East Midlands team, didn't it? It was mm. pretty full on then. I asked Brad if he could have a word to get me on, because I wanted to be part of a team. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go out skating with a bunch of guys and Sounds like do a pretty team, good team stuff. as well. We've had some amazing teams through through the years. Mm. Um, really Can we good. bring Icon back? I'd love to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's... <coughs> a lot of people actually ask me, like, would you go on a, if if they brought it back, would you like have a board and stuff? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Especially if they made their ABC. I don't even know. That's where that still any, about? That's I don't even know if ABC is around. Can you see if ABC would shop is still about? They were good ABC boards, weren't They're they? They're the best, yeah. best pop ever. Do you, always, do you remember that time we went skating? This is years ago, and I had that... 
it was a, a Ricky Oyola guest board on death. And I think at the time that run of boards was on Ricky Oyola guest board on death, death skateboards. Yeah. And that was on bareback wood, I think at the time. And I remember you, it was, I think it was when the crossover from icon to bomber had happened and you were complaining about bomber balls being shit. And you had to go on mine and you, you tried doing a kickflip and it was like, Boing, yeah. you're like, fucking hell. Like, compared to the other boards at the time. Just, but, I mean, we, we bought back Bomber. Yeah. No one gives a fuck. That's, it's done. Like the Bomber had its day even before I got on there. Yeah. To be honest with you. Like, I think that last team we had when it was me, Grove, uh, Will. Yeah. Scott Whitaker. Eric. Um, Eric was no, there. Eric wasn't on then. That was, was later. later. Yeah. Like Eric and Golden and Stan was way later. Who was, wasn't who it? was yeah, who was that guy? Was that was when Unabomber was like the Get Leicester yeah. team. Who was that guy that he used to do big handrails and skate really gnarly? I can't remember his name. He was on Gaz Jenkins. No. Where is Gaz Jenkins now? He was pretty dope. He's a carpenter. Yeah, I've seen him not long back at a job. No, well, he just bumped into him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. What, um, what, who, year? what year are you talking about? Someone yeah. who's big on rails? Yeah. Fuck, I can't even remember. Because the team that I remember is like Frank Stevens, Channa. The original team. Yeah. yeah that's when t- Bomber had its, that, that was that, when it had its right. That's, that had uh, its Ali, boots on then. Yeah. Ali. Ali um, was a bit later though, wasn't he? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. It was kind of, it was one of those brands that kind of was never, I remember buying one of the first Bomber boards when I was in Leeds, late 90s, but. Other than that, it was kind of, I don't know, it wasn't really my sort of thing. I, don't I guess you were doing a lot with Def, so you were probably occupied. I wasn't occupied. at that point, really. I was just doing my own thing. Well, what was you occupied with? What were your favourite brands at the time? Fuck, I don't even know. I always feel quite stupid because when I was growing up, I just bought a load of American videos. So that's what I looked towards. Mm. And now I look at boards from like when I got into skating, like 2003 or four. And they're all st- the British boards are still well good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like blueprint boards were really yeah. good. Oh yeah, there were still good Unabomber boards, and I just wish that I was more clued up as a kid. But like you said, like ignorance as a kid, you kind of just. I've said it on show on episodes before. Like when I got into skating, it was the boom of like the BAM era, with like Destructo, Element, Adio, all that shit. Yeah. So that's like everybody looked at Icon as like a. As far as I could tell, everybody looked at Icon as a team play away, kind of. What do you mean? Like a Asda brand in skateboard. Oh, like oh, really? A what, a what Asda. brand? Asda. Asda. Mm. Like like Asda. Like, yeah, like a supermarket brand. It wasn't real enough. But I mean, there was Did, a lot... Because it didn't have all the cool people on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Classic it still sold a lot of boards. Yeah, I loads. mean, like you, you'd get royalties, right? I, f- at first, I got royalties, and then I got paid monthly. Yeah, how much are you getting paid? What? What's that? How much are you getting paid from Icon? I think it was two fifty a month. Yeah, plus royalties. No, just that was it, and we used to get um, <laughs> photo incentive. Yeah, good. Yeah. How many boards a month did you get? Four. Four boards a month. Four boards a month, two sets of wheels. Yeah. Uh, talking of nice. the wheels, right? Set this story straight. Is it true that your Icon Pro wheel is on all the trams in Nottingham? Yes. Fucking, there we go. Tell well, I we don't know it. if they're still on there. Can you talk to... Can Tell you, us how can that... You, what, can you what explain went on that? There? I, I, don't that. Know, right? I don't even know the full story. You're I heard that from Kennelly at Slugger. He was like, you know that you know that Smedley's wheels are in the revolving kind of doors or the, the, the no, mechanisms? It's on, like, um, so you've got like a cattle grid on a train. Mm. Yeah. yeah. They've got like a plate and it kept snagging. Yeah. So somebody thought, let's put Skate wheels on it. And they came in and bought a, a couple of boxes of wheels. And I think they only had the icon ones in. That it's not is, just it, mine, it's like all the team ones. No, they say well. it was just yours. So it was just your pro wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's the royalties off that from <laughs> the Nottinghamshire nuts. Tram Company. Did you get royalties from the wheels? Yeah, yeah. That's good, isn't it? You wouldn't get any of that now, I don't no. think. Right. But there's a lot more money involved in skateboarding now, surely. No, absolutely not. So pros don't get paid. I, I think, there's, I think there's, more, get paid. there's more money in it, but it's so much harder to get money from it. Yeah, because mm. there's so many people doing it now. Back then it was different because there was only a handful of people, really. You had like your select few special ones, didn't you? Yeah. 
and like the market wasn't so oversaturated with board brands. Yeah. Like you look at UK board brands at that time, say safety is over 50 now. I assume that at that time you probably had 15 or less core UK board brands. So you was forced to buy more British brands because there was less of them. Mm. Whereas now there's more British brands and the, there's so many brands that the UK is tiny. So kids are, they're not staying loyal to one one like British brand. Yeah, I mean, I think that... Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, that's think, how the, I, see the, it. I think there's a massive misconception amongst people who are not in the industry that skate brands are selling shitloads. You know, like these people who are like, I'm going to start skate shopping the arse end of nowhere. I think they think they're going to sell thousands of pounds of skate stuff <laughs> a day and they open it up and they're it's like... It's hard, oh, man. They're like, I've sold a sticker this week. You yeah. Know, like stuff like that. Like, it's really hard to sell anything in yeah. skating because there's so much option you got to so be I was trying to do um I was trying to do pariah <coughs> yeah get that into shops and mm. nobody just nobody wants another english no. brand last thing we There's need is many. another board on the wall yeah you just you you know you almost want to shrink your offering down mm. i mean 90% of them come from the same wood shop anyway so it's essentially it's the, same the same board stuff, yeah. and people are wise to that now and if you're not then you should be but back in the so day when branding. I first started, you only had, totally you only had a brand. handful of board companies. That's what I mean. And they're yeah. all American. Yeah, it was the big Santa Americans. Cruz. Yeah, Powell, Powell, Santa Cruz, Dogtown maybe, um, SMA. Yeah, SMA. g and S. And Santa was, Monica Airlines, well good. Yeah. Isn't it? And then that was kind of it, wasn't it? And then slowly, then Defbox came in. And that kind of... That opened the doors for yeah, English and that's brands. what sort of changed it. It was Death and... Uh, sorry, Defbox and Bash. And then... Later on, you know, when Flip started, then it was Blueprint. I'd love to have been on Blueprint. I could have seen you on there. What, like, what did it? Was I it? heard a story about it. Go on, it, tell us. Like, From McGee. I, I don't, yeah. Go on, tell no, us. No, it was, it was through someone else that told me the story. What is it? And I don't know how true it is. But um, there was talking about putting me on. Yeah. When I was winning a lot of competitions and yeah. doing videos and stuff. And then uh, John Weatherall, yeah, a Nottingham skater, yeah. who was on Blueprint. Yeah, we always back in before Blueprint, we used to skate kind of together, but against each other. And yeah. it, all it did was push us. Mm -hmm. Like, and he was the first person I ever saw do a switch V sixty flip. Yeah, he was good at switch stuff really oh, early was on, amazing. wasn't he? Like early nineties, he was doing. He was such a good skateboarder. Switch, he was in in innovative, stuff. like yeah. You couldn't even comprehend. Mm -hmm. But apparently he told Dan that I wouldn't be skating for that long because I was a bit of a chav. <laughs> so not to put me on. I mean, you still are a bit of a chav, but you're still skating. You say chav, I say I'm just into hip-hop and I like what I like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm only... Do you know what I mean? Like, I can be... I, I, I could have seen you. Have been a chav. I, I could have seen you on Blueprint. I think that would have worked, you know, it, like... Yeah. Fucking hell, that would have been good. I think yeah. I'd have worked harder. Yeah, I think you would yeah. have done. Because, yeah, I mean, you take your skating seriously. So I didn't take it seriously. No, I, I mean, like, you do it properly. Yeah, you, I, you commit I, and you get I into it. I thought, I'm getting free stuff, so <coughs> I'm going to try my hardest. Yeah. But I think that would, it, if yeah. you're on the best English board company at the time, you're going to be like Fucking a hell, dog with good. two cocks. I, I still don't. You're going to want to <laughs> go for it. Talking of two cocks, can we talk about three bulls? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had to just drop that in there. I still, I still don't think... Since Blueprint, there's been a UK brand that's had no. such an impact. No. Like, like graphic-wise, team-wise, yeah. you look at the quality of their videos, <clears throat> there's not really any UK video still to this day no. that are putting out the quality that McGee did when with Wayne, the skaters and yeah. like how it was filmed and how it was edited and presented. Like He put so everything good. into so, that so company to make sure that Wait. it was like British heritage kind oh, of yeah. thing. Waiting for, this, waiting for the world, that video. Like, Unbelievable. Soundtracks still, are amazing still as well. stands up today. It's so good. I've got that shrink wrap back home. I might crack it in the VCR tonight. <laughs> I'll just watch it on YouTube. But and all the extra footage on the later ones. like. Uh, well, what was it that we said about Lost and Found? Like, it's got a bonus disc, but yeah. everyone's still got parts. And it's like, how much were they filming? They were just mm. out. But then they had the money behind them with Phase 7. This is, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not, um, what am I trying to say? They had a, they had better opportunities they, than they, there was else. a lot more money around them yeah. and they were going away on trips and they had they had commitments with the mags where they would have double page spreads but that meant that they would have you know 
ed- X amount of editorial stuff, tours, trips, mm. etc. Mm. Yeah, they were so they, it. So they they had it all lined up, and that's McGee, you know, doing his thing and lining that up, so it all fell into place, and that brand was, you know, it was a it powerhouse. It was huge. Even the know? Americans wanted it when it yeah. disappeared there, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's one of the first things that, like, we all in in England in everything we follow America, mm. and then they wanted that. That mm. just proves that it was good. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, Blueprint was something else, you know. I mean, they they did a lot of boards. They must have been selling a lot of boards mm. at some point. I don't know how much the pros were getting paid, but they were getting and they were nice. They were good boards. I never yeah. knew where they were made, but they were good. ABC. Was it? That's why I like mm. them. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure they were at some point. Because ABC had a rocker. Yeah. And that gave you the they pop. They really straight rails as well, didn't they? They were, they were good boards. But they came out with new stuff all the time. Mm. I, I wish that was... <laughs> it's a shame it kind still... of you know came to an end, really. But, I mean, I don't really know why it came to an end, but I've heard stuff. But I used to be at them Radlands comps. <laughs> The, I'd see someone from the Blueprint team and I'd just think, oh, no point entering. Yeah. Yeah. Like, these guys are amazing. Yeah, they were so good. They were really ahead of it. Wait, hold on a sec. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Who is it this week, Ford? It is Calm Club CBD. You mean the CBD gummy company that's been featured in the Daily Mail, BBC, Daily Express and Cannabis Health magazine? That's right, Toby. They make the best CBD gummies available because they're vegan, they use all natural ingredients, GMO free and comes in 100% recyclable packaging. Also, as I'm getting on a bit now, and due to its anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties, it really helps my post-skate recovery and provides pain relief for my podcaster's knee, which is a real life thing. I've heard that some studies, that's right, I've actually read up about this. Done your research. Yeah, I've done my research. That some studies even show that these help alleviate symptoms of ADHD, which we all know I have pretty heavily. Well, Calm Club make it super easy for people to try their gummies because they do a little sample pack for nine ninety nine, and they also do a monthly subscription to make life as stress free as possible. It's a good day to be you, our listeners, because we actually have a hookup for you. Make sure you head to CalmClub.io and enter Brain Drain at the checkout for fifteen percent off. Fifteen, one fifteen percent off. That's five percent more than ten. That's C A L M C L U B dot I O. Use code Brain Drain for fifteen percent off. You can check them out on Instagram at underscore Calm Club and share your CBD experience. Is there. Ford, it's back to the show. Back to the show. Um, t- 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 who's been your favourite team mate of all the brands you've been on? My favourite yeah. team mate? Yeah. There's a few because they all, they've all meant different things Surely. and I've been friends with them differently. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Surely Brad's probably in there. Brad's that. one. Brad's really high up there because, yeah. like I said, without him, I wouldn't have carried on. Yeah, he just pushed you. Mm. And same with Will. Will Golden. Yeah, fucking Like, Will. He's, he gave so me kind of like my youth back. Yeah. Mm. Made me push myself again. Yeah, he's insane. He's still skating a bit, isn't he? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Just had a kid, so. Yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. I remember, uh, I wish he was still putting out video parts or something. Oh, man. Like, he had yeah. it, didn't he? He was really good. He had the tricks and stuff. Yeah, still has. Yeah. He can not skate for like six months. Yeah, he's a natural. Come yeah. out and do a switch, switch flip back tail, big spin out. On the biggest ledge you've seen. Mm. He can just do it. Oh, you was on Icon, what was it, for 14 or 15 years? Yeah. And then what did you, when you went pro, did you have a wheel on Icon straight away? Yeah, that's... To, to yeah. like accompany it or was that a little bit later? I think, I think the wheel was first. What was the biggest size, like 43 mil or something? It was 50 mil. 50 millimeter was the biggest size. Are you still riding size. 50s? No, 52s. Yeah, 52 is kind of the one now, isn't it? It's, it's middle of the road. I sort nice. of dabble. 52, 53 seems yeah, to be the popular size. I go up and down, but I always sort of settle back on 52s. I just think it's, you know. Having my own board and wheels made me into like a right snob. Yeah, red top ply. Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> it's insane that you love red top ply because there's such a stigma about it, isn't there, that red top ply is... Yeah, like every like I know so many people have had red top ply boards and they've they've fucked themselves really bad on really? red top ply board so board so they won't skate. Oh mate, I, they're I, just like, the best. I've known people to send boards back from their sponsors to get a different color top ply. I don't think having all that stuff made you a snob about it. I think that's partly to do with getting older as well because I think a lot of people were like that now. As you get older, you're like it's got to be the same because you can't be fucked with getting used to something 
or having some kind of mental oh, no, breakdown. No, no. Oh, do you mean a stub with it in regards to the boards, like, what the boards made from and the wheels? Not just or, like, or like the attitude, size of it and stuff like that. Because yeah, but it's your product. That's what. So when, yeah. when I used to go, when I used to be sponsored by a non-stop, for instance, mm -hmm. getting blanks, I just wanted a red one. Yeah, red. Yeah. Just get me a red blank. Any I wasn't size. bothered what size it was. It could have been a seven inch. It could have been an eight and a half, and I still skated it the same. Yeah. And all I wanted was white wheels. So they could have been fifty-six mil, forty-eight mil. It didn't matter. It, 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 and then now, because of all this, I got. It's got to have a red top light. It's got to be this size. It's got to pop light. What size are you riding now? I think everyone's like that, though. I ride at eight now, yeah. but yeah. I drill my board, my truck bolts back. So does he, for a short wheelbase. Toby Fucking likes hell. a 5.2-inch wheelbase. 14's best. Yeah, most boards now are pushing over that. And what do you like, wheelbase? Isn't it 13 uh, point something? 13.75 if I can. Yeah. Well, I have to drill that myself. Yeah, I do. I, do I just it. have to. Like, I, I, I don't know why, because they used to bring boards out with the front truck bolts doubled up. Yeah. yeah. So you could choose whether to have a longer nose or not. Yeah. We, uh, that's I mean, what we used to see it as. But really is that why you like a short wheelbase. wheelbase predominantly for a bigger nose? Or is no. It, or is it's it for... Because it's got a, all the weights more in the centre. Yeah. So It's I, easier to do anything where the board spins lengthwise. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just like tray yeah. flips, yeah. front the side flips. They're just so much... It takes the pressure off your legs a bit. Yeah. Well, you're in luck because we have a 5.5 5 <laughs> complete skate mafia. We've got the skate mafia. You know those complete? The little ones. Yeah. Oh, oh, you've got to you need to get you out. You've got to have a little guard. What That'll shoes be ridiculous. You, you can skate in them. You'll be fine. Yeah, what shoes are they? No, I've got my... These are retro Air Jordan 3s. I can't skate in these. You're not what? got any skate shoes with you? I might have some, uh, skate yeah. shoes in the van. Um, but I think, just to cut you off there, I think knowing specifically what size you want, boards, wheels, etc. I don't think that's a snobbish thing. No, I think as you get old, like it's I was saying, as you get older, you, you know what you like. Yeah. You can't be asked to fuck about with it. Yeah, also, if it works, it works. Also, if you're busy and you only get a certain amount of time to skate, you don't want to be asking about getting used to something new. Just but, get... but I like it now. I what? like it. You know, now I don't get anything free and I can't choose what yeah. I get. I go and I pick different boards on purpose. Yeah. Like, yeah, you did last time you were in. Yeah. Step out of your comfort yeah. zone a bit. What did just, you get last time you were in? Was it two primitive boards? You, just one you, primitive board. Is that what you're still on at the against, moment? Yeah. What, um, is there any specific UK board brands or American, American board brands that you're sticking to at the moment? Um, no, not really. I really like the national boards. Like, that's another company. Like, if I was 10 years younger, I'd be like, I want to be on Can't you get like a guest pro model? That would be nice. I saw that out, right? I'm going to message, right, I'm going to message Ry Gray today. Yeah. And say, nice, look, we had Smedley on. He, he wants was talking to, about some how much he likes national. Can you have a guest Because model? all red top ply, seven like, and three eighths wide. My favourite skateboarder at the minute yeah. is Tommy. Yep. Tommy May. Yeah. Yeah, he's And he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he's had a I never kid met as well, him. hasn't he? Yeah. Has he? He's really good. Tommy. Yeah, really did, good. Did you ever look at his old footage when he lived in Barcelona? He was skating for mm -hmm. some board brand. I forgot what the, what its name is, but he has always skated the same, and he's always been fucking well good. Yeah, like quick just, feet. As yeah, well. just he's a natural, isn't he? You can tell that he's just having fun. Yeah, mm. you can tell he's having fun because he has no social media. That's yeah, a, that's the first. Fucking ass. Yeah, that's the first it. sign. Of don't it, stick it all over the internet to try and get likes. No, he. <laughs> He's just one of those rare, rare breeze weights. Like he literally lets the skating mm. talk for itself. You mm. see him in video parts and that's all you need to know about him. And just he don't plan anything. You, you can just tell he, while he's skating around, I see him a lot at Snenton and stuff. Yeah. And you can just tell he's, he's winging it all the time. Yeah, making like, things oh, good, huh? well, I feel like doing this trick right yeah. now. I'll do that. Um, just what you were saying then about social media and people putting stuff on there and that. Did you see the clip of Heath Kirchart on Tony York and Jason Ellis's, what was it, Wolf versus? W Hawk versus Wolf. Oh, that Wolf thing, yeah. 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 I've it, watched that. So, where he's just like trying to explain to them that he's not interested in social media and stuff. I like, I like that Jason Ellis says something like, is it always been evidently clear that you've been naturally talented at skating? And he just goes, I was nat never naturally talented at skating. I fucking died. Every time I skate, he's like, yeah, he Jason Ellis is like, well, you look like you're really comfortable on your board, mate. He's like, Come no. Like, mm. I think some people just like saying that to good skateboarders, but, so, you know, some skateboarders are 
really consistent. But people like Heath Kerchart fucking died mm. trying yeah, to. Yeah, oh yeah, shit, to didn't he? Icon fizzled out, and then Bomber came into play because mm. it was all in house at Snakes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at, at that point, who was on Bomber then? Grove. That's that guy, Tom Watts. Tom Watts, that's Tom it. Watts, yeah. yeah, unbelievable skater. Yeah, he was yeah. from like powerful, Oxford, wasn't he? Oxford mm. way. Yeah, he was good, wasn't he? He was from Pennyville. Who? Pennyville? Yeah. Where the fuck's that? That's where Tom came from, Oxford, wasn't it? Tom came from Pennyville. Where's Pennyville? Where Tom came from? (laughs) Oxford. You know where Pennyville is. I never heard of Pennyville. For fuck's sake. How long was it from Icon to Bomber? Was it like an immediate changeover? Or was you not on... That was like kind of when the, did Icon end and when did you get on Bomber? That was kind of the time I moved to Derby at that point because I remember being around that first summer and you were you were just starting to ride Bomber boards then because mm. you were saying how shit they were and you yeah. kept snapping them all the time. I was snapping low. I, yeah. I, I never snap boards. I'm not heavy enough. And we went out, me, you and Horsley and, uh, to the Snakes Bank down the road mm. and you ollied that weird gap through the signs and then you backside flipped over the wall, pavement to flat, snapping those, rode yeah. out. Oh, and I've probably still got the, the footage somewhere on a, v- really? yeah, on a VX tape. Is that bank the one that I think you're thinking of where they put the, yeah, where they put the bricks in? The oh, God, bank, that yeah. would be such a good bank if it didn't have that fucking... I think that was also the night that Nick Roberts shot his sequence for his first light. Nolly Hill into the bank. Yes. Yeah, That was the was. same night. I mean, that was a good trip mm. for Horsey. came out and shot two photos in a sequence in the space of about 30 minutes. That's but, what we used to do, though. Yeah. It was. Um, what do you think to uh, what do you think to the lack of sequences in skateboard magazines now? Because I know Toby hates it. There's no sequences in magazines. Well, they're not. I don't read magazines. Yeah. Since since uh, Sidewalk Surfer went and it went online. Yeah. Didn't look at it online. Yeah. Because I want. About it. I like to have it in my hand and. But there was always sequences in it, wasn't there? Mm. Like if there was a good and you'd think still. there'd be more sequences because it's digital. Yeah, but there's none now, apart from trick tip ones. Because everything's video, isn't it, now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah true. but I still want to see a sequence. Mm. I still want to see that. I don't know. Um, how long was the Bomber thing? Probably two maximum. Because that me. was like Snakes had Bomber and Heathen. Yeah. Didn't they? And then Bomber just fizzled out, and so did Heathen. Not many certain. people liked the fact that I went on to Bomber. <laughs> Who didn't? I think this is just a rumour again through the grapevine, but I think Harry had a bit of something to say about it. Right. Like, I didn't fit. But Bomber had changed. It wasn't yeah, it the wasn't. Bomber-y. Yeah. Like, yeah, it evolved a bit, hasn't he, it? He yeah. was a, in, involved in the original Bomber, yeah. which yeah. was what it was made for. Uh, it when got watered down. When... Um, Bomber came to came to the end of that. What was what was going on with sponsors and that? Because you went on to Nice. Yeah. What, what a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, like what? <coughs> what is it? And did you have a, did you have a say in the the medal with the medal graphic, the Michael Jackson one? That the, was the a, medal with the medal was Bomber. Brad designed that. What was the what was the? Or oh, maybe there wasn't <coughs> a quote on the the medal. Yeah, the, what was there? We've got it here. Can we have a look at it? Don't meddle. The, yeah, because that was a that was a, a a submitted question from a legendary friend John Burke in Leicester, absolute skateboarding legend. Ben Powell What's that came meddle? up with that. Don't meddle. It wasn't yeah. don't meddle though. Was it not? No, it was never meddle. Never meddle with a medal. Yeah, <laughs> he's good with, for he's good for taglines like that. Like you can't rinse the hints. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think it. I think it was a uh, Red Bull Manly Mania. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, they were good. He just shouted it out one day and it stuck. Right. I'm going to name drop, obviously, because Avi seems to always make his way because I'm a fan of Chris Averton. But him it at Red a, Bull Manny Mania. Red Bull Manny Mania. All the ones I went to, he was either he always, first, second or third. Yeah. Oh, man, he's good. Yeah. Especially at Manny's. And he attacks everything in a different way to everybody else. Yeah. Same as Kate. Kate used to skate differently to everyone yeah. else. Yeah, those. Um, and yeah, those, Avi was amazing at Manny's. That that those Manny yeah, Mania videos, Manny like I found one online where you're in it, Avi's in it, Joe Moore mm. is in it. Yeah. Now he was like, 
I tried finding him, Joe Moore. Where in the world is Joe Moore? He just because he got on Pal Pro, you know. Did he? Yeah. Really? Yeah. The no fuck? way. Oh. There's um, there's a video on the Pal Pro YouTube by Stacey Peralta where it's like they're talking about Joe Moore and there's like a montage and yeah he just got on Pal Pro and then he like disappeared. I heard he got like quite a lot of bullying happened from the skate scene at that time because he was doing some pretty yeah well around shit. around yeah around then you you'd get slated if it wasn't cool guy shit wasn't it mm. so but now i mean you'd be more welcome than ever it's changed a lot in that respect for the better yeah. but back then it was like it's gone you, back to the early feel now yeah yeah which but is like good. The, whole, the whole skateboarding community is a bit more together again instead of it's a lot more cool open guys, now. The... Yeah, I mean, you can do anything in skating now as long as you're not being a cunt. Yeah. Sorry. Cunt. No. <laughs> cunt? I don't think Paul watches cunt? the shows anymore. He watched the first few, but yeah. he, he's probably not watched any for a while. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. What? So, what, nice. Let's talk about nice. Like, what yeah. was, was, was it? it what nice? is it? Is it a guy from Long Eaton or something? No, he was from Nottingham originally. Yeah. And he had an indoor... Ramp with a couple of blocks. This is how nice became nice. Yeah. And he, he called it Nottingham Indoor Skateboarding Emporium. Okay, yeah, makes sense. And at first, it was just a mate. And then he brought the boards out. It, when, <coughs> obviously, I left Bomber. Both me and Grove left Bomber at the same time. Yeah. <coughs> and Why? What happened? Because they wanted to keep bringing boards out with our names on and not giving us any Royalty. money, mm. which is poor. Because if we're, if we're out there basically killing ourselves, because my knees aren't the same anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, we should get something for it if they're selling with your our name. name. on it. Yeah. Because yeah. you're selling a board... With the name mm. on it, and pe you know, people will be. It'll be fifty-fifty. People will just be buying the board because it's a bomber board, but people will be buying the board because it's a, yeah. whose name's on it. And me and Grove was both looked at each other and was like, "We're not doing that." <laughs> yeah. So we left. Yeah. And then Ben had. Well, I've got a nervous twitch now because I'm talking about Ben. <laughs> <laughs> me and him have got history now. Uh, so Ben brought out nice skateboards. Yeah. He asked me to ride for him. I did have a wheel out first. Yeah. On nice. Yeah. Which was pretty, it was all right. Wheels, I weren't really associated. I had a really good video part on there. Mm. Just to clarify for the listeners, you and Ben Grove left Bomber at the same time, but the Ben that started nice is not Ben no, Grove. It's no, Ben. Ben I know his Durden last name. Fletcher, I think yeah. his name is. You throw that in a bin over um, there, Jack, get it in. And I think. <laughs> <laughs> it was successful at first, yeah. and it went to his head, and he started getting big headed, which made, gave him a lot of false confidence. Mm -hmm. He started drinking a lot and turned into a prick. Yeah, there's a there has been a couple of times where he's I've been out drinking with him and his wife, or ex wife, and it started on her just out of nowhere. So I've had to knock him out. One time was on a tram. Did it have your wheel, your icon wheel on the tram? It might have done, I don't no, know. <laughs> but the doors opened. Yeah. He started shouting, so I punched him. He went through the doors. The doors closed and me and his wife carried on on the tram and left him in there in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure... Grove had a board out on there. Yeah, it's downstairs. The uh, Nottingham, Nottingham Forest, Forest yeah. board. And mm. he tried, Ben tried, this is how bad it got, Ben tried to threaten me, Ben, the owner of Nice, tried to threaten me with Ben Grove. How? And I was like, like, like me and Grove are ever going to get into anything, like we're friends. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh. why would we fight over someone that's a prick, basically? Just because he wanted to scare me. He came to my house with some big bold guy once. What for? To threaten me. Like, for what? Threatening so, you to do what? So to escape for the company? Yeah. No. So when, when this was after all the nice stuff, 
Yeah. He was going through a really shit time. So, and he left his wife for a bit because he wanted to sort his head out. So I said, look, come and live with me. Yeah. I'll give you a room. I'll help you sort your head out. And then we'll get back on it, bring the company back out and, and we'll go for it. And make it like, good. Yeah. And, uh, I'll make it good again. I went on the big push with Osiris. Yeah. Left him in the house for the week and he had parties, ruined my house, so I kicked yeah. him out. And then a couple of nights later he came back with this dude supposed to be tough. And I saw him outside after the knock on the door, I looked out the window, saw him. So I opened the door, I goes, What? And he was like, I've come to get my stuff. Now this big bold guy that he brought was hiding behind my wheelie bin. <laughs> He's like, I've so heard about Craig Smedley. His backup work. I've seen the don't medal with the medal board. <laughs> I know what's happening there. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I ended up keeping all this stuff. Yeah. Sold it. Nice. Just We just fell out because he turned into a bit of a dick. Yeah. That's not very nice at all, is it? No. Cool. It's weird now. Some people, like, you know, nice wasn't particularly, a, it wasn't a big brand or anything. No. He's skating, but he went to his head and... <coughs> So after that, there's the the pariah thing. Now, I don't yeah. know too much about it. I know a fella called Danish from near Hinkley Ways. Like, he's one of my mates that skated with Brown No, Tamil. he was on the team. He had something to do with it, yeah, but I yeah. don't know too much about it. But, Did Amir um, Williams have something to yeah, do Amir with it? Yeah, Amir was on it. Yeah? Yeah, he, he had a really good graphic, old Dirty Bastard album cover. Yeah, graphic. with his face on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've still got the T-shirt, actually. So what's what's the pariah thing? What was that? So like, run us a little bit a, through that. It's a board company from, I want to say Southport. Yeah. Owned by a guy called Dan. Yeah. And he's an old 80s skater, like vert skater mainly. Mm. And he just, he wanted, it, the company was out for a couple of years before I got involved. Yeah. And he asked me to ride for him and I was like, yeah, it's free board, isn't it? Yeah. That kind of fizzled out as well. I was at a transitional stage in my skateboard and I didn't believe in myself anymore and I didn't want to push myself anymore and I just didn't think it was right to take free stuff off people. Mm. Then only last year he's been in touch with me again, wanted me to run it. Yeah. Like the whole company, because he's gone to move out and live in Spain now and he wanted me to run it. But like I said earlier, it's too hard to get it into shops and stuff. Yeah, because it's just another board brand on. Mm. It's just another board on the wall, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like, yeah. The, I mean, I it's saturated now. I don't even know where you'd start with that. Trying to get you, you, you can't. It's just no one cares. But it was a good brand, and he had some good riders. Yeah, o OG had it for a bit, but yeah. like, I mean, I think they've fallen out. So I don't. Really that know. might be why Dan got in touch with me <coughs> then. That's me if I no, wanted this to was, do it. Like in the last few months, I think. There's just a lot really? of bullshit in oh, skating. I, I don't know. Isn't Maybe it? I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of bullshit in skating. But anyway. Um, so with boards now, you're back to buying your own ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah buy. Do you, do buy you feel... T tickles my fancy now. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, do you feel like when, when you stop getting boards and stuff and you can buy your own stuff, you kind of start enjoying it a bit more again? Yes. Because it's the excitement of like, mm. I'm going to try this board, this shape, this concave, this width. It may, you know it, I mean? it kind of makes you feel a bit like that. Bit of a kid. 14 year old, yeah. yeah, going in the shop, looking at all the boards, yeah, like, oh, look at that shiny one there, look at this one, yeah, mm. this one's poor Rodriguez. I like him, like, can yeah. I skate it? It's good, yeah, you get a bit of variety and try new stuff. Um, on the subject of P Rod, let's talk about the uh, because P Rod was on Plan B when they came over for the, the Plan B tour, yeah, yeah. Um, Run us through what was what was going on there because it was battle was it Battle of the Buzzy and the, yeah Battle of the Buzzy and the Plan B guys were there for that weren't they yeah and then uh, the uh, the rumor is that Danny Way saw you skating and invited you to the demo at Saffron Walden next Saffron day Saffron Walden next yeah. day yeah so amazing run, run I had us through legs that. of lead <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt I w I was on that trip we t what did you talk about it with Haslam I was on there as a filmer when I five did it. Um, when you saw when you were at the hotel and with PJ, and that was funny because I was on silver trucks at that time as so. well through I five. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't actually remember too much about the Battle of the Buzzy event. I remember the Saffron Walden thing the next day. So I don't, I don't believe I should have won it. Still don't know. I don't really remember much about because that. there was people doing like 
switch back tail or flip out. Mm. Yeah, but you got your shit, and yeah, you can do the, the blunt side switch crooks. The, the blunt, the blunt flip out. <coughs> I didn't. I had no idea if I was going to do it. Yeah. But then, so what happened then? Did Danny Way approach you after that? So it was before. What was he saying? How did so, it go down? Yeah, run us through the day. So uh, I'm trying. I'm trying that trick. Yeah. On the T. On the T block, block. Yeah. And I started getting cramp. And Danny Way, who from when I was a kid was my favourite skateboarder of yeah. all time. Yeah. I used to skate, roller snakes mini ramp, singing only one way to do it. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he throws me a bottle of water. It's like, drink this, get rid of your cramp, do it. So you got to do it, haven't you? Mm. So then I did it. And that's why in the in the footage that is on the internet of it, I scream at the camera after. I, like, I want to find that footage. As if I'm bigging myself up, but mm. I'm not. I was that stoked that yeah. I'd done it for Danny Way. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh, I went over, got my board, and that board had uh, six fifty-pound notes inside the cellophane. That was the prize, and uh, went over with the board, got them all to sign it. Mm. And he says, "Oh, we're going to Saffron Walden to do a demo tomorrow. Will you come along?" Yeah. So I was like, "I've got it." Yeah, of course you got it. Yeah. So. Th- the Sunday morning, gets in the car, goes down there, tries to get in, and Jane, for my five, <laughs> said, you can't come in. And I was like, hang on. Go and ask Danny. <clears throat> he invited me to come. She went over and he went, yep, come on. Best day ever. What? Why, would, why would Jane not let you in? I don't understand that. I don't know, because I was skated for Silver Trucks as well. It's so fucking weird. I, I mean, I can tell you some stories about that trip. Let me just have some water. You've changed your drinking habits with that bottle now. So <coughs> we went to Heathrow. <laughs> Fuck you. We went to Heathrow and we picked them all up. Mm-hmm. All good as gold. Apart from fucking Danny Way. Sorry to piss on your parade, but that guy was a prick from the minute we picked him up. He can be, though, because he's he massive. Was such a prick the whole <laughs> time. Everyone else was great. Like We went out for a curry with P-Rod... Um, Colin McKay, Duffy, the team manager at the time, and that was they were just mellow regular dudes. And Who stuff. else was on it? PJ Ladd, Ryan there Gallant. We go, that's yeah, what. Um, PJ Ladd for me is like a mecca of so skill. Nuts. Just to extend how much of a prat Danny Way was on that tour. So at Saffron Walden, bearing in mind this is, I mean, this is a, how many years ago are we talking? 15, 20 years ago. This, yeah, it's got to be. So Saffron Walden is like if you never. If you, have you been there? It was brand new. Yeah, we went. Me and you. Oh, yeah. So it, like, it was a brand it was, new it was skate brand park. new at the that time. That was a big comp park kind of in thing. In Saffron Walden, which at the time, we didn't have like extended opening hours and shops and things like that. You know, there was a few places that would stay a bit open, but it was kind of shut down because it's the middle of nowhere, Saffron Walden. Mm. You know, there's not much going on there. And then they got this, town, isn't it? They got this massive park there. Anyway, Danny Way announces to Jane, who was trying to look after everyone and do the best to, you know, be, um, you know, hospitable as possible to him. He announces to Jane that he can't skate unless he has a tuna steak. (laughs) So Jane, (coughs) like, loses her shit, understandably, and goes into Saffron Walden to try and find tuna steak. On you're not going to you're not going to find it no. in Saffron Walden. There's it's not like fucking America where you got all these crazy <laughs> shots. It's just nothing and she came back like I haven't found it and it's like losing her mind and like I was like what what unreasonable expectation. I know you are Danny Way and you jumped over the Great Wall of China or something like that. But <laughs> he was a prick. And like it really it really kind of blew it. Because so I was like he, you. Because like, he couldn't get the tuna steak, did he not skate? He or? did. No, he did, did skate, and he skated well. Yeah, but he, I just think, like, why would you be such a cunt to put that massive downer on her trying to look after you and, like, I can't skate unless I've got tuna steak? Like, fuck off, mate. Like, have some of these fucking budget sausages on the £5 barbecue I'd have like everyone else. a tuna else. sandwich. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> the next I mean? best but, thing, pal. But there was other shit he was doing, on, like, in the hotel, I don't know, whatever. 
you know, but Danny Way for me as well, like he was one of the big dudes, mm. but he kind of blew it with me. I mean, not that he gives a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to watch this and be like, oh my God, I blew it with Toby Bannon. Yeah, yeah oh. I know, but, but I don't. Oh he, man, I'm never going to get on yeah. that brain drain. <laughs> <laughs> but like, he just, he came across as such an arrogant prick. And I swear a lot of the team, they acknowledged it as well, but they were just like, it's plan B, we can't really do anything mm. about it, you know. And, you know, anyway, whatever. I mean, PJ lad couldn't stay f far enough away from him. Really? I mean, that, just oh, as an outsider. Guy anyway. He is yeah. quiet. I'm just yeah. more jealous that you were in the same place as PJ lad. Yeah, not very much because he would just be, he'd disappear and do his own thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's rad. But Colin Super McKay's quiet, a rad dude. doesn't care. That, that Colin McKay. Nice dude. Mate. Yeah, rad dude. He surprised me that day. Switch straight up them three stairs, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, he can do it all though. But you got to look back to the um, Plan B Questionable when they all had when their street parts. When they had parts. the street parts. And Amazing. all of their street parts were like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, and like Colin McKay was doing everything Switch at that point and he just come from being a overt mini skater. But they, they both him and Danny <coughs> Way can skate vert like street skaters. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's their thing, isn't it? Yeah. And that's like Reese Nelson, the one, the 11 year old girl who Colin McKay kind of teaches mm. at Hawks Ramp. She's doing all the tricks he kind of came up with. Yeah. She's skating that like a ledge. It's just brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, Colin McKay is a rad dude. I mean, his skating is something else. Yeah, always will be. Funny dude as well. So with um, that, how did that demo go then? You said you had the, it was the best day. Did you have oh, the just best amazing, skate? Like, just yeah. enjoying? Yeah, I just got to do some of my own tricks in front of Danny Way. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And he said, yeah, to a couple of them. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gave me a right boost. I remember filming Danny Way in the deep end of the, the pool with the, the concrete coping, doing the backside airs and stuff. He did a switch backside flip in there. Yeah. I didn't film that. Which was unbelievable. I went and just hid away. I think at that point I kind of was over him. Your social battery is very small, isn't it? Fucking <laughs> tiny. Like his bladder. I remember being fucking roasting hot and I just had a towel oh, over my head. Art. I had a towel over my head to hide from the sun because it was unbearable and it was brand new white concrete yeah. park. And it was like sunglasses. You got a suntan under your chin. Yeah, it, was, it was gnarly. <laughs> it was so hot. Um, anyway, that's a good story. Um, let's talk about knocking out Chris Oliver. Yeah. How did that happen? I don't think I'm not. Come on, give us come on, give us some information on this. Let's hear the story. We've spoke about it since. He'll be all right. Yeah, I'm sure he, he wouldn't give. Yeah, a shit. He, we laughed about it, and he said he, he deserved it at the time. What was he doing? So, when I was on Adio, we was in London for some competition, and uh, was at the after party. Yeah, in some nightclub, and all I can remember about this nightclub was. Were you breakdancing? No, no. We need to talk about breakdancing. I was very drunk <laughs> because Stu Graham had a super Legend. soaker. Yeah. <laughs> full of white rum. Yeah. And he kept coming up to me and shooting it in my mouth. And I had to... Sw You're not going to argue with him. Not with Stu Graham? No. Not at that time as well. Because he will eat you. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm drinking all this white rum, plus drinking JD and Coke. So I'm hammered. And uh, Nick Warman, team manager of Adio okay. Shoes yeah. at the time. That's who I was just on the phone to. Yeah. Really? Mm. Oh, lovely guy. He's a lovely yeah. guy. Yeah, he's <clears throat> cool. Um, he comes to the bar, because I'm stood at the bar getting another drink. He comes to the bar, I guess, I've just been over there. Spoke to that Chris Oliver. I asked him if he... Cause I, I said to him, I got some really good footage of you last week at NAS. Yeah. Do you want it or can I put it in the icon video? Who said this, Nick? Yeah. Or, yeah. And uh, Chris turned around to him and goes, did you wank over it? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I was just like, what? So I walked straight over to Chris <laughs> and I said, are you Chris Oliver? And he went, yeah. And I just hit him. I think I've still got the scar there from his tooth. <laughs> Fucking hell. And then about 10 minutes later, I was sat on, this is a bit I remember about the club. It had aeroplane seats as they're seating. Yeah. And I'm sat on there feeling worse for wear, hands bleeding. 
and all these guys stood around me, like, and I just looked at all these feet surrounding me, and I looked up and I went, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> because I thought you either got to do that, yeah, or I've got to back down, take yeah. the beating. So I just got up. I went, "Who's next?" And they were like, "He deserved it." Who was it? Who was that? Who was that lot? There was, I think it was. I think there's an old London skater called Tyro. It's all London guys. Can't exactly. I couldn't see everywhere. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I was shitting myself. I'm not going to lie. I, was, I thought I'm going to get my head kicked in here yeah? because I've just done something really wrong. Because I don't think Chris was even 16. Though. He might have been. Cut that bit out. <laughs> but I hit him. Yeah. But we've been we've been on trips together since and yeah. talked about it. I've apologised, and he's turned around himself and gone, I was a prick, mate. It's the best thing that happened. And that's what these guys said. Shook my hand. Says, mm. We've been wanting to do it for ages. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, I love Chris Oliver. Oh, he's I've great. Never met and him. He's, he's, he's fucking good. Amazing on a skateboard. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely amazing on a skateboard. Um, Side flip melons over cars. Yeah. What a mm. Give me a little breakdown of some breakdancing. Stories, breakdancing stories about one where you you join into someone's breakdancing oh. routine and Pancho's there. Yeah, so at NAS, can't I can't remember what year what year it was, but I was hanging around with Panch one night, drinking. We stood in the audience of the breakdancing competition tent, and uh, <coughs> all of a sudden I get some nudge like this. Pancho's pissing in some guy's pocket. <laughs> 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 the guy oblivious to it. <laughs> then we then c continued to move closer to where the break dancing was actually happening. Yeah. And we bombarded the dance floor. Just it's makeshift. Brilliant, just pissing in someone's pocket. <laughs> makeshift break dancing yeah. in the middle of a competition. <laughs> yeah. And the next morning, I came out of my tent like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I saw all them lot tying Pancho's legs to a car <laughs> via a rope. Yeah. And then they just drove off and dragged him out of the tent across the field. I think that was on a Sanchez. Yeah, that rings a bell, actually. Yeah, I think it was on the episode. <clears throat> Quite funny. Can we, um, when we've done this, can we go outside and uh, as well as getting you to have a go on the Skate Mafia mini board, mm -hmm. can you do some break dancing? We'll no. get some cardboard out there, go on. No. Oh. What about if we warm you up a bit? How do you want to warm no. him up? I don't know, getting get near the heater? <laughs> I can't, I've got a broken wrist. You, what, right now? Yeah. Have you not got a CNT? They can't fix it uh. because it's got a screw in already. Oh dear. So he was asleep and then just Oh, he was, he was passed out in his tent. And just got pulled out by his feet. And fuck. I just managed to get up. Out of the way. Come out of the tent and see it happening. Fucking hell. It was amazing. Um, and the screams and shouts from him while he was being dragged around that field was hilarious. Do you want to talk about your three bollocks? My three bollocks? Yeah. Well, everybody knows about I it. I know, but it's <laughs> like... You know, it's one of those urban myths, thing, urban myths things, isn't it? The way I found out was yeah. my girlfriend at the time. Obviously, we're in bed and we're getting cosy. Got your three bollocks she out. Grabbed hold of them and screamed. <laughs> right. <laughs> I went, what, what, what? Because I didn't know. I didn't, yeah. I didn't fiddle with myself. And uh, she was like, you've got, you've got a lump. So I went to the doctors thinking I'd got ball cancer and they shone some torch through it or something to see yeah. whether it was cancer. And he started giving you high fives and was like, and then he was like, you got free balls, boy. It's, it's not actually, so it's one bollock that's turned into two. Yeah. Like I got a small, medium and a large. <laughs> Tribal. Got the full size range. Tribal. Yeah. Um, 
Would you say it's helped with your like front side nolly heels to tail? No. <laughs> but, was it helped with your skating at all? Like? <laughs> probably not. Uh, uh, Listen, probably I've seen helped. you do those. I've seen them blunt slides to switch crooks. <laughs> I'm sure three balls were made that it's easy. It's helped right? me get popular. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember being in the blue dog. A party trick. I remember being in the blue dog and you were talking to some girls and you were like, I've got three balls and you got them out quite happily and showing them. Yeah, yeah, I used to back then. Yeah. Well, you do it now if you want. No, I'm all right. <laughs> Nobody wants to see. All right, well, we'll, we'll mock up some kind bombs. of animation. We'll, we'll, or blow we'll blow it out. If you send us in, <laughs> send us in a photo, and then we'll put three balls. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sure I could knock something together on Photoshop. Yeah, Danny was the one that kept telling everybody. Yeah, he was quite. He was really check out my mate. He's got three balls. It. Yeah, that's yeah. That was I remember I think the night. He used it as a way to talk to women. What my mate's got three balls. Yeah, yeah, probably. I think that's what he used it for. Legendary stuff, though. Yeah, it really is. Like around that time of the Blue Dog, oh, Smedley's he's here. He's got three balls, and that was that was it. <laughs> um, let's talk. What do you want to talk about? Smed bench or Smedley trick tips? What's your what, the trick tips oh. video? It's know. right behind you there on the shelf. If you want to grab it down and have a little read on, is that you there? I haven't seen that. So this is breakthrough uh, with Craig Smedley. Yeah, a long time. We that was at Derby Storm. Yeah. I used to love that place. I wish that park was still here. I used to go there drove past every it the day. day. Um, I bet Snakes probably sold a lot of that video back in the day. We had to get another run of it. And I still, even now, I've, I'll meet new skaters, like not young ones, obviously, and they say I learned some stuff from that. Yeah. Um, who filmed it with you? Nick Warman. Yeah. Big ups, Nick Warman. Um... And uh, and we did it the most unprofessional way you could ever dream of. <laughs> How long did it take to film? I filmed this at the same time as doing Equilibrium and Focal Point. With Ian Pasma. Yeah. Yeah. Which Ian needs di digitising if anybody's got it. Focal Point. Yeah. I'm sure someone it, has. Can you it Google needs that? Put in Ian Passmore, internet. Focal Point. I'm Do you sure know I've seen I've seen I've seen it on the internet. My section's not in it. Damn. It was odd. Was it? Yeah. I haven't watched it. I need to watch it. I want to watch it. Yeah. I haven't watched, I mean, you I haven't don't watched know what it since it came out. No. You, I didn't you like still it. with those jokes from five years ago? Um, did you get royalties or anything from that? I think I got one payment from when it came out. Yeah. But we did a lot of copies of it, and I think it was, I think I got a pound a copy. Mm. So how much would you have got in total? I think it was about a grand. Okay. Uh, Adio Days, we do you want to talk about Adio? Adio, Days. Getting Adio on? Days was amazing. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Could talk to us about your fondest memories of Adio, how it started, how long it lasted. So Adio started being distributed by Shakespeare, the same people that distributed fishing gear. That's right. Mm, okay. And me and Nick Warman made a sponsor me tape and he just sent it to everybody trying to get me a shoe sponsor. Because wasn't Nick, do it, he was the agent for Adio at the time, wasn't he? No, no. So it wasn't even that, that far in, it was just... No, he was just, he was the team manager of Icon. Yeah. And that was it. And uh, it was through me getting on Adio that, that he, he became an agent right. because... They couldn't pay him to be team manager, but they could pay him if he was an agent. Selling it. And and being the team manager. Okay, no, I mean... That and he hit, he hit the jackpot at that time. That, that the Bam is a shoe, good time Kenny to get Anderson in the shoe, shoe game. Mm. Yeah, that Kenny Anderson shoe was immense. Mate, that, that set Nick up forever. That mm. was great. Brilliant. Yeah, he did all right. Um, mm. We all did, really. We got to go on all the... All the, I wouldn't have gone abroad if it weren't for skateboarding. Mm -hmm. And I got, well, I went to loads of places with, like Div. You would have gone to IB for or something if you hadn't gone with skating. I'd sure. have gone, yeah, somewhere. You would have, really you would have managed crap. to get up Nottingham to IB for or something. What do you have a Costa del Sol or something? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> Tenerife. There you go. You would have. You would have got there. Magaluf. Don't don't put yourself down, Smithy. Mag Shagaluf. Magaluf. No, the first time I went abroad was when I went. On the first trip with Icon. Yeah. Where was that? We went to Barcelona. In the, back in the day when it was fucking unreal. Yeah. Untapped. 
And I had cornrows. Of course oh, you did. Oh, rad. You got a photo of that. And I got robbed. Everyone gets <laughs> robbed got, in Barcelona. It's like... Got sprayed with mace because <laughs> I, I tried to get my wallet back off this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm oh, there. I mean, it's unreal that you managed to catch him in the, in the process I of I felt doing him it. go in my pocket. Yeah. And Every time I've been there, I used to go there like for trade shows two or three times a year and skate trip. Every time I've gone there, someone who I'm with has had something nicked. Mm. Passport, wallet, keys, rucksack, My phones. man had his insulin robbed. Out of, like He left <laughs> his Supreme bag just on the floor at Parallel and then it went and he was like, where's my Supreme bag? We were like, well, it's a Supreme bag. You've left it at the notorious Parallel mm. and all it had was his insulin. So he spent days going to different pharmacists mm. trying to get someone to communicate back to England that he needed his insulin, wow. otherwise you'd die. Yeah. Did he get some? Yeah, he did get some, yeah. Did it come in a Supreme bag? No. Mm. <laughs> Shame that. Yeah, the pharmacist stole it. But yeah, uh, Adio trips and stuff like that. Sorry, getting your... Getting on, You got Adio. sprayed in, with mace. Because yeah, so I'm wrestling this guy, trying to get my wallet back. Where was this? It was just on the beach near Barcelona. Yeah. And it was our last night there. So did we was out on the beach partying and this guy comes up, gives it the whole, hey, England, Manchester United, yeah. And we're just going along with it. Next thing, it's gone in my pocket. So when I'm you like, realised he was nicking your wallet, did you turn around to him and say, don't meddle with this medal? No, because that phrase hadn't been brought out. Oh, that's a shame. That probably would have got, he would have gone, whoa, I've heard. I don't think he would <laughs> So he sprayed you with mace. Did you get it back? No, he didn't spray me with mace. I'm wrestling with this guy. Hmm. And his buddy runs up, sprays me. And I don't know if you've ever been sprayed with pepper spray before, but it murders your eyes. Yeah. Honestly, it was terrible. Famously. It was awful. Yeah. And uh, so me, and then they, they just scarpered, they ran off. And me, Reese, and Adam Fletcher were trying to wash my eyes, which is the Worst thing you can do with him. I think the only thing you can put into ease it off is milk, isn't it? I don't know. I think that's spicy curries. You drink milk to stop the spice. I don't think that's mace, but. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. But luckily, I had no money left because it was our last night. <laughs> Are you Googling that? What's good for mace? Yeah. Pepper he actually spray. is as well. <laughs> but what the, is pepper spray? <coughs> the Adio trips. Yeah, go on. They were. Always amazing. Were you on the one when Tony York came over with Bam? And yeah. Was it like skating with Bam? Did you get to skate with Bam that Yeah, much? we got to skate with Bam. Did you hang out with him? Yeah. That was just when, my, I guess. My favourite one was when we went, I don't know if it was when Tony York and Bam was there, because the mm. Americans came over a couple of times, and we skated the works with yeah. Jeremy Ray, yeah. uh, Danny Montoya, Kenny Anderson was Kenny there. Kenny Anderson was there. Yeah. He should do well, didn't it? And in the hotel that that night, me and uh me, Danny Montoya and Jeremy Ray just spent the whole night playing pool. Sick. And I thought you were gonna say something, you spent the whole night practicing front threes. To no, no. And that was like obviously we gets into a conversation and was talk I was talking to Jeremy Ray about the work skate park. Yeah. How I found it odd to skate ramps that blended into the floor because yeah, it's a wooden yeah. floor. And he yeah. was like, mate, I can't even see the bottom of the ramp because I wear glasses. Right. That's why he was doing everything to the flat pretty oh, right, much okay. because yeah. he didn't know where to <laughs> land. <laughs> mm. That's nuts. Didn't know that. Does he wear contacts when he skates then? Or? No, I just don't wear his glasses. Mm. Any good BAM stories? He wasn't really sociable. Mm. All I can tell you is it, when we was at the PlayStation doing the demo, he was trying to, he had a really long like ledge that went all the way across the driveway at yeah, that yeah. point. And he was trying to crook it all. And Sam Coleshaw just went up and crooked it all first go. <laughs> <laughs> Did he turn around so to Bam? So Bam just sat down, like didn't skate mm -hmm. much after that. Oh, poor Bam. Fucking sure. love Bam. But his second pro shoe was amazing on Adia. Yeah. Yeah. I love that shoe. I mean, you hear stories about how much those guys got paid 
I mean, even Chris Roberts, he had a colourway in one shoe and he got paid a fucking lot of money for well, that. Well, Div, Div had a colourway in a 50-50 shoe, didn't he? Yeah, did it he get was, paid? I that? was supposed to get, I was supposed to have my colourway and Fuck. I couldn't go to the States. So you didn't get it? Because I was, I, my son was going to yeah. be born, so I couldn't go there and I didn't get my shoe. Fuck, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. How much did Div get for that? I don't know. I don't think it was a lot. I heard Kenny Anderson was getting like 80,000 to 100,000 a quarter. Oh, they were getting royalties. ridiculous money. I think it was probably more than that. Dude, Kenny V2, though. Indestructible yeah. show. I'm surprised they sold many. Yeah. Because <laughs> you could just couldn't get through it. Yeah. You Didn't got fed up of them before you wore them. Yeah, they were, they were good shoes. Yeah, they? bulletproof. Yeah. Wasn't there... Then it went to shit. Wasn't there like a rumour, the reason Bam and Hawk left Adio is because they didn't they weren't getting enough money from it but something like at the time they were still on like contracts of up to a mil yeah probably. but like hawk was there <coughs> bam was on his like the peak of his career well it's like Hasan was saying wasn't it like when you have a shoe deal or any kind of royalty thing you you have like you get paid this salary but if you go above this break you'll get royalties on that with mm. shoes. And yeah. a, lot, a lot of the time you don't go above that because you've got to sell so many thousands. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine in those days, Adio, I mean, that's the Kenny, isn't it? Kenny V2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that shoe was something else. He must have. Can we find it. pictures of the Bam V1 and the Bam V2? Because they are. How much are they on there? On eBay? $330 on eBay. Yeah, I had Oh a my God. They look brand new. I've got to go through my shoe collection. I would. I've got loads. Yeah, have you got what them shoe in, bo size in boxes. Yeah. Boxes, well, brand new. What Three. shoe size are you? Seven. Flip well, they were, they were seven as I'm an eight now. Okay. But you know, like... You got any OG bands <coughs> in the box? No. I oh, man, I'd love, I'd love one just for... I've got some Jeremy Ray. For display. The, uh, they'll start degrading pretty soon, so I'd get rid of them for mm. them and just sell them on. Because people will pay that money for them. That's the, that's the one I'm talking about with the gum sole. The yeah, black that gum was a good sole. Uh, It's just yeah. a gorgeous fucking shoe. You're gonna have to put these on the screen when you do the. Edit. Look at it, it's a that is a good Adio shoe. I had those. Had airbags in, didn't it? And airbags. Yeah. Air bubbles. Airbags. Airbags, bubbles. You know what I'm fucking talking about here. <laughs> what's hey, boy. what's they this? They used to hey, send boy. me a list of. They used to send me a list of all the shoes I could have, and I just eat. I just text. Uh, Warman. Nick Warman back. Just send me white ones, please. Yeah. Just want white shoes. That's How it. many pairs did you get? What was the deal with that product wise? I think was it quarterly or yeah i think i used to get the equivalent of four pairs a month mm. i think it was mm -hmm. three maybe three or four pairs i a think month. back then the shoe game people got a lot of product then i mean i know nicholson always when he was on etnies i mean he had stacks of him up to his ceiling mm. in his room like seen him at the weekend is he right yeah he's still in etnies shoes i mm. think or probably still shoes. probably still wearing the same ones he got yeah yeah what was what was um what was your process with going through shoes? It's four shoes a month last year because Joe Hinton claims he goes through a pair of shoes a week. But then you look at the, the shoes he wears, now. He wears like flip flops, doesn't he? Like so really, I say, you, like you look at shoes things. now, like they're thin as oak. Yeah. Like shoes then, like you said, Kenny Anderson's, you couldn't go through it. No, you just wore them until you were bored. Yeah. And what I, I used to like everything brand new. I used to like skating in brand new shoes, brand new board, brand new wheels. Your and psycho. So, Baines used to do that as well, apparently. Yeah. Like new shoes and new setup. Yeah. It's insane. It oh, insane I, I, to me. I, couldn't, I couldn't have new trucks all the time. Yeah. That would be like skating on a tightrope. Yeah, it sounds fucked. But yeah. So I'd just change my shoes on what mood I was in. Yeah. You had enough of them, didn't you? Mm. You used to sell a lot of that stuff. I used to sell a lot. Yeah. But that was how I used to get everywhere. Sell yeah. it. I put petrol in my car. I think that was yeah, kind of the unreal common, isn't you could it? do that mm. stuff. People are still doing it to this day. I never sold any boards, though, that were brand new. No, Always skated them. Always skated them for a week. And when I set a new one up, I'd sell the second-hand one. Have you only got... Or are these your one. last icon boards that you've got? You've only got one of each of those, or have you got... A... I've got one of each, yeah. you know, got multiple. My dad's got one of each. Nice. So how many pro boards in total you had? Was it 18 or something? Or something? 20. 20. Yeah, I've got the one you gave me when Dan Dan Leach, he was on Icon as well. You had the the, the series. What was the graphic? It was like the was they those? Fuck, I need. There to was a couple of series out. Was they the 
ones that Mike took photos of, them stuffed animals with Fuck, I don't know. like a rabbit with caterpillar legs or I don't know. Something. Typing icon I, skateboards. I'll, I'll dig them. Producer. I'll dig them out for the photo. But yeah, I've got the one icon skateboards. Grace Medley and the one Dan signed. Or the, the, one, the Ace of Spades ones. Jeez, I can't remember. Hi, it's Toby here, your mum's favourite presenter for The Brain Drain Show. I'm here to talk to you about Roller Snakes, and I've got an absolutely fantastic double-digit discount code to give you, so stay tuned. Roller Snakes was founded in 1985 by Sir Paul Haynes, which makes it one of the UK's oldest skater-owned stores. Roller Snakes stocks all the shit-hot brands, including... Adidas, Brixton, Carhartt, DC, Element, Independent, Levi's, New Balance, Palace, Polar, Santa Cruz, Spitfire, Thrasher, Volcom and Vans and many, many more. At Roller Snakes, there is a free to use indoor skate park, indoor mini ramp and outdoor skate park, which I designed and it's really good and everyone loves it. And if you don't and you suck, don't come here. We also put on numerous events throughout the year where you can turn up for free and win loads of prizes. Roller Snakes have given us a discount code for Brain Drain listeners. Enter Brain Drain 10 at checkout for 10% off your next order. Minimum spend £30. Terms and conditions apply. Go to rollersnakes.co.uk and buy all of your stuff and things immediately, if not sooner. That was me, your mum's new best friend. And I'm looking into the camera now and hopefully looking into your mum's soul. How is your mum? Tell your mum stop texting me. Over and out. Goodbye. Craig Smedley, what is Smedbench? So I made a. I, I used to make my obstacles myself anyway. Mm -hmm. So when I first started skating, back on my Santa Cruz Claus Grab Key, yeah, melting clock faces. Such a good graphic. I had such a good graphic. I built myself gutter pipes, mm. stored them underneath my porchway, and every night I'd pull them out, make myself a little skate park outside my house. That's what I used to do. There was nothing really to skate. I had one bit of coping that I'd just recycle on. Well, I used, <laughs> I used my mum's uh, chrome <laughs> rail out of the wardrobe, wardrobe <laughs> as coping. <laughs> and it was oval. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I've always been into making my own stuff. And I just thought, there's no good blocks anywhere. So I made a bench. And that had chrome coping on it, the first one. Painted it black. We used to take it to Clarendon. Mm. And then Sidewalk asked me to do a step-by-step -step making one. I right. paid for all the stuff. Nice. And I made the, se the second one had really nice angle iron on it. Yeah, yeah. I remember filming... When I filmed the blunt flip out on the first one, the black and chrome smed bench, that was made out of a bed as well. <laughs> the legs of it was the legs of the... The <coughs> old bed. Rad. Leo was taking a sequence of it. And I was under pressure because he had about 16 dead rolls of film. Back in the film. On, day, the, yeah. on the curb. And he had about three rolls left. But you got it? Yeah. And then I flipped in and out. And he'd, he'd run out of film. I used to like them Clarendon get days. Mm. Get most not skaters down there. In the evening, in the summer. Yeah. Just pull anything out. We used to store that bench in the bush. I think most most scenes would have obstacles stashed somewhere, yeah. you know, like mani pads, grind rails, just thrown somewhere so you can pull them out. It was an amazing day. Then. Yeah. Because um, you, you're a carpenter now, aren't you? Is, it, is that right? No, I'm a plumber and a carpenter. A plumber I do, and a carpenter. I do everything there. Yeah. Mainly fit. Posh bathrooms and kitchens. For What's people. the poshest bathroom you ever fitted? Poshest one is the one I made complete. I made the whole room. I made the walls. Yeah. And then I fitted all bath, four piece bathroom, big bath, shower, walk in shower. Have you ever been on one of those toilets where it washes your bum out? A B day. No, it's called a bidet. <coughs> a bidet is like the old fashioned. Like, old, yeah, you used thing. to have it next to your toilet. Yeah. Old fashioned bum hole cleaner. <laughs> mm. That's what you call your mum, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, you can't say stuff like that and not get a mum joke out of old it. Old fashioned bum hole cleaner. Yeah. But yeah, I've made I've made some good bathrooms. Hotel standard. Yeah. Cool. Have you ever stolen any uh 
You ever stolen any equipment from these bathrooms you made and made a smed smed bench? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. Maybe that a could... B day smed bench. Yeah. Oh, imagine a B day smed bench where you sit in a blunt and it also washes your bum hole as you're going across it. I have skated at Old Bath. <laughs> yeah. As a ledge. Yeah. Yeah. Like we took it out the house on my lunch break. I was just like, oh. What, and then fitted it I'm after? Just, I'm just going to grind this <laughs> side of this bath, see if it will work. And it did? Yeah, it was all right. Nice. It's an old cast stuff. iron bath. Yeah. They're worth a fortune, aren't mm. they? Did you sell it? Weighed it in. Yeah. How much did you get for it? 80 quid. Yeah, there you go. Good story. Buys a board, doesn't it? <coughs> <coughs> Goes to the bathroom, just. gets the bath out, skates it, and sells it. Yeah. That's it. Weighed it in. <laughs> Let's wrap it up then. Cheers, Craig note, Smedley. Our final parting gift, no Smedley. <laughs> would you do the honour <laughs> of bringing back Icon Skateboards? I'd love to. Go on, pop it Someone's up. Someone's got to do it. That's I, don't, a, I don't really understand what's going on now, but there you go. That's, actually, that, that's a gift from our <coughs> show sponsor, Ashley Mercer. That actually looks legit. <laughs> one, gonna, one quid? Yeah. Fucking hell. And you can change the size of it. <laughs> Just pull it apart. <laughs> right. There you go. Big ups, On Craig. That note. Thanks, dude. Good to see you Thank as you always. Very much. Oosh. Ring bump. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming Been in. Nice. Good stories. If uh, do you want to sign us off and say my name's Craig Smedley of Icon Skateboards fame, you've been watching the Brain Drain <laughs> show. <laughs> That's a lot to remember. My name's Craig Smedley. You've been watching Brain Drain show. Goodbye. The, the Brain Drain show. If you want to sign it off to that camera, you don't have to, but you can yeah, if do you it. want. What am I saying? What am I saying? I'm Your Craig Smedley. And you've been watching, you watching the Brain Drain show. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to. Like I wouldn't want to do it. This is like doing this all again now. Did you have to do on camera stuff with that? Oh, all right, just imagine you do it. Nick Warman's there. He wants to film the outro yeah. for you. Do you know how many outtakes there were for that? Thousands. Oh. How many outtakes do you think there is with this? Millions. Like. Only for millions. I couldn't stop laughing. At <laughs> God, just try to do it one time. All right. I'll, I'll be Nick. There you go. He's Nick Warman. So I've been Craig Smedler, and you've been watching the Brain Drain Show. There we go. Let's wrap it up. Roll the credits. Round, round of applause in studio audience, please. Woo! There you go. Last one, dude. Right, let's go wash our arseholes. Big ups, Nick Warman.